Whether you thoroughly enjoyed Halo or absolutely hated it, you have to admit that the visual effects were pretty impressive, and this is how they did it. MPC was mainly focused on character creature work. Some of the sequences they worked on were the Madrigal battle, the Letgolo swarm attack, and the Eridanus battle. MPC was also responsible for every profit shot throughout the whole show. For the elites, they had to develop a range of unique skin colours and patterning types. They settled on a core of five base looks that could be altered to give variety if needed through hue shifts, stripe choices, and additions of scars, scorch marks, dirt and blood. The elites, jackals and grunts were represented on set by a variety of different stunt actors in mocap suits and some others on stilts. This was mainly to give the actors something to interact with and to get the approximate height, eye lines and framing correct. For the elite, they mainly used keyframe animation because even though the stunt actors on stilts did indeed wear mocap suits, their movement was too difficult and unstable to be able to get any usable actions for reference. Unfortunately, there isn't really a way to simulate a Letgolo swarm on set. However, they did string soldiers up on wire rigs in order to get some relatable action involved. The swarms were procedurally driven and able to flow across surfaces and track toward targets, push through openings and move around obstacles. Animators were able to use low-res proxy tentacles to block out the shape and timing that would later be flooded with the procedural worms. For hero and specifically directed movements, individual worms were keyframe animated. For the profit shots, they had full scale thrones on a hydraulic base. They made puppet versions of the characters and an operator from behind the throne controlled them. No animatronics were used on the faces because the heads were going to be replaced in post. They took their initial acting cue from the puppet versions in the plates and from facial witness cameras of the voice actors performing their lines but then they gave the moves more purpose regarding the dialogue and eye lines in order to add depth to the overall character they were trying to create. The hardest thing about the Prophets was that they had these long monologues in an alien language that had to have a convincing facial performance that would hold up to close scrutiny in 4K. And it's not an easy task to make a CG character speak in a foreign language with visible sentiment and look truly conscious and believable. Pixamondo used real-world photography and designs from the games and the art department as reference material for the Reach City environment. The impressive cityscape started with a pre-built CG scale model base for the buildings that they could adjust and augment as needed. Scale was the key to this approach because by designing the assets within the city to scale, from the city blocks all the way down to cars on the roads and boats in the water, it was possible to move the camera from super wide shots down to tight looks at specific areas. Components could then be swapped from background to hero resolution based on the camera's proximity. The Reach City environment had major hero buildings and the rest of the building blocks were generated procedurally in Houdini. Pixamondo was also responsible for several different alien species from Covenant. The Jackals, Grunts, Brutes and Atriox. Although the characters are all based on their essential looks from the games, they were completely redesigned to make them more realistic and engaging in the shots. Because these characters are warriors and this story was unlikely to be their first time in battle, whilst making the characters they focused on wear and tear and realistic damage on the armour and weapons. Also, the colour palette from the game, like most games, is very vibrant and uses a lot of saturated colours. So they tried to maintain the main colour tones whilst reducing their vibrant nature to bring them closer to a real world colour palette. Pixomondo used both keyframing and motion capture to animate the characters depending on what was happening in the shots and the style of motion required. All the action was designed to look and feel like the game. The POV shots were designed to give the audience a reminiscent view of what it was like to play the game. The frantic camera moves and close combat shots made the viewer feel immersed in the action. The helmet edges framed the view, the visor and graphics were added to support the scene, and the mini-maps and ammo counters were animated to match the events happening all around the viewer. Cortana is played by Jen Taylor, the same actress that takes her role in the Halo video games. Her facial and body performances were created through motion capture and they also made a library of supporting animation clips on top of the actress's facial and body motion captured from the set. 
She had a complex structure with more than 1,000 joints and roughly 800 blend shapes for the face. There were also a number of shots in which Cortana appears as a small figure on a desk or the dash control of the Condor gunship. For this, the actors had a miniature 3D printed Cortana model with them on set to look at during the shoot, and Jen's performance was shot separately. The facial capture was mainly done on location. This data was used as a performance base and the audio from that capture was used directly in the episodes. Jen and Cortana's facial features are actually quite different, so the captures had to be adjusted to bring the sentiment and emotion from Jen's performance to Cortana's face. Rodeo FX were tasked with creating environments that were going to surround the characters throughout the entire season. This included the deserted and derelict Eridanus II, the mining colony of Rubble City, Oban, the waste salvage colony, the Madrigal Outpost and High Charity. The Madrigal Outpost was a combination of both plate photography shot on location in Ontario, Canada and CG elements. And all the action sequences, pyro elements and stunt and wire work for the battle were also shot in that location. The destruction of the sky pipe was done by using real practical explosions produced at the location. They then could match these to create a chain reaction rising up the pipe that they combined with sections of CG pipe that broke away and CG dust flying toward the camera. The worst thing about the entertainment industry is that, no matter how good a production is, there will always be something to criticise. But the best thing about it is that no matter how bad a production is, there is also always something to appreciate.